This is Dr. Hoenig. We will now review the molecular mechanisms of insulin action. Insulin exerts its physiological action by binding to the insulin receptor. The insulin receptor is a dimer and contains of an extracellular alpha subunit and an intracellular beta subunit. Binding of insulin to the alpha subunits causes the beta subunits to autophosphorylate a tyrosine kinase residue. This leads to phosphorylation of several intracellular proteins, which alters their activity and generates a biological response. When insulin binds to the receptor, um, this leads to a transport of insulin-dependent glucose transporters to the plasma membrane where they dock. This doesn't always... In order for insulin to uh, lead to glucose uptake into cells, um, insulin needs to bind to the insulin receptor and uh, this leads to an insulin-mediated translocation of the glucose transporter GLUT4, which needs insulin to be active. Uh, this glucose transporter, um, the presence of insulin increases the number of GLUT4 transporters in the absence of insulin, about 90% of GLUT4 is sequestered intracellularly in vesicles. When uh, glucose transporters dock in the plasma membrane, they change their configuration, um, and this allows basically that a pore is formed through which glucose can go from the outside of the cell into the interior of the cell. There are several glucose transporters. The insulin-sensitive or insulin-dependent uh, glucose transporter, uh, which is primarily located in muscle cells and adipose cells, is GLUT4. This is a high-capacity, low-affinity transporter. We also have GLUT1, which is a um, low-capacity, high-affinity transporter, which is located in most cells of the body and is constitutively active. And we have GLUT2. Uh, we already talked about GLUT2 when we talked about um, glucose transport into beta cells. GLUT2 is not only in beta cells. It is um, in gluconeogenic organs, and it's also found in the hypothalamus. There are other GLUT um, um, glucose transporters, um, which we will not talk about in this lecture. Insulin is the major anabolic hormone. It leads to synthesis of glycogen, protein, and fatty acids. It also leads to iron transport, in particular potassium transport. This is used clinically to decrease potassium concentrations when potassium may be um, very high and life-threatening, as can be seen, for instance, in blocked cats sometimes. Insulin inhibits uh, catabolic reactions such as lipolysis and gluconeogenesis. Insulin can act rapidly, for instance, um, when we look at increased transport of glucose, amino acids, or potassium into insulin-sensitive cells, that occurs within seconds. Uh, within minutes, we can see stimulation of protein synthesis, inhibition of protein degradation, the activation of enzymes that are involved in glycolysis or glycogen synthesis, and uh, inhibition of uh, phosphorylase and gluconeogenic enzymes. Insulin also can have a delayed uh, reaction uh, when, for instance, we look at um, the effect of insulin uh, increasing the mRNAs for lipogenic and other enzymes. So in summary, uh, insulin um, acts through an insulin receptor in some cells, which is a tyrosine kinase. 
Insulin stimulates translocation of GLUT4 transporters to the plasma membrane. Uh, these insulin-dependent glucose transporters are found primarily in muscle and adipose tissue. Other glucose transporters are not dependent on the presence of insulin. GLUT1, which is a low-capacity glucose transporter, is constitutively active and widely expressed in most cells of the body. Insulin stimulates protein and fatty acid synthesis, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, and is the major anabolic hormone. And it inhibits catabolic reactions such as gluconeogenesis and lipolysis.